Hello, Tracy from Salem here, back to update you on this piece that I've been working on, this memory cloth that I started uh, two videos ago, I think. Um, <clears throat> inspired by this book, Expressive Stitches by Jan Dowson, which I've talked about many times, and particularly inspired by this um, memory cloth that she did. Um, and so in the last video, I was collecting supplies and I was sketching out my uh, design. Um, and so I've been uh, collecting fabrics and begun some stitching and um, making some, some progress. Um, so yeah, it's hard to get the whole cloth in. Now these are just pieces, mostly pieces that are just laid down. I have started stitching here on the bottom. Um, these are, you know, my, my ideas. Um, and they will continue to kind of evolve, I think, as the cloth evolves. Um, right now I'm working on the sky. Um, and at the t in the last video I was showing these various fabrics uh, that I had laid out uh, or collected, I should say, for the sky. Um, in Jan Dowson's book, she does, she has an embellisher, uh, which is like a felting machine. It looks like a sewing machine, but it's a felting machine, and the little thing that goes up and down has lots of felting needles in it, and so it can felt the fabrics together. And that's how she coheres her fabrics. Um, and I had tried that with just my hand puncher, so I had put all the background materials down, um, and um, felted them with just the hand puncher. Uh, and they, they all adhered together and that was lovely, but the minute I started stitching, they started to come up. Um, so she also, when she does it, she puts um, a piece of chiffon or tulle across all of her stuff to um, kind of capture it after she does this kind of collaging part, uh, she puts a piece of chiffon or tulle, then she uses her embellishing machine to embellish it all to the background fabric. Um, and as I said, it just all started coming up. And so I ended up having to tack it down with invisible basting. But what I didn't wanna do is I didn't wanna put tulle across the entire thing because um, she enjoys a muted palette, but I prefer a brighter palette. Um, I mean, I love her work so much. I love looking at it and admiring it, and I think it's beautiful. And I just naturally reach for brighter materials. I can't help it. <laughs> um, so, so I decided after a lot of hemming and hawing, uh, with I had a I had a black chiffon, I had a um, ma uh, like a sorry, like a plum chiffon, and I had a plum tool. And I just decided in the end I was not gonna cover the entire thing um, because I just didn't wanna mute down those colors. However, as I got to the sky, I realized that, um, you know, it's, it's obviously what I'm gesturing towards is the gradation of colors in a um, sunset sky and how it, you know, how it, at, towards the end, is just a little light at the bottom and it gets gradually darker and darker up to the, you know, what do you, I don't know what you call the top of the sky, the bowl of the sky, uh, where it can be quite dark and where stars cut, start to come out. Um, and I really felt like it needed more cohesion here because otherwise it was just strips, strips of different colored fabrics. <laughs> so I did put the tool, um, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I did put the tool over the sky, as you can see. Um, maybe if I zoom in a little bit and pull back the tool here, you can see the difference in the color up here and down here where it's covered by the tool, just a little bit. Um, but it does bring more cohesion to the sky. So I went with that. And then hopefully I'll be able to make it all one piece by stitching that I'm gonna be doing over it. And in the center, which I don't have created yet, will be an egret flying up to the moon, which will be here, as you saw. So what I have done is I have started some, I just couldn't, <laughs> there's only so long I can design before I'm getting pretty antsy to get that needle going. Um, 
And let me just tilt the camera a little bit and zoom in. So the first thing I did was this square here. which is the homage to Jan Dowson. Um, I don't know if you saw in that book that I showed a minute ago, her central image was this flower. Um, it didn't look exactly like this. It looked like Jan Dowson's flower, and this looks like my flower. But this flower is my homage to her. So I just did some running stitch on the background piece, and then I collaged down, and I did, I think what I did was a palestrina knot. Is that right? Or a coral knot, coral stitch. So the other thing I'm trying to do is learn stitches from Susan Spargo's, Sue Spargo's book of stitches because I signed up for a retreat with her in the summer and I didn't realize till afterwards that it was an advanced retreat and you're supposed to know all the stitches in her book already. So, so I'm going through that book and um, um, I think this is actually like a coral stitch, this knot um, around, around the uh, edge here. Um, and then I've never done any kind of embroidery with ribbon, so I wanted to, this is a little piece of, um, of the, uh, wool that I used in the sky. I'm trying to create references across the piece so that something that's over here comes down over here and vice versa. Uh, just to create, again, to contribute to a sense of cohesion. Um, so I have that little piece of um, purple wool in the middle. And then I, and then I tried some um, <laughs> ribbon embroidery. Um, you know, so as you can see, it's not a, a perfect, like the, um, the spokes don't go, don't go out the same amount on each side. Okay. Um, and then... On her piece, what she has is she has a border around each square. Uh, so on the, and um, most of them are couched. It looks to me like a lot of them are couched. So I took um, some, I think it was this, this stuff, uh, and couched it down around this square. Um, the next square, this is just a piece of, you know, uh, I forget what you call that stuff, like burlap, dyed, obviously, burlap, um, not, not by me. <laughs> um, and again, this uh, piece of sky, this piece of uh, wool is also being used in the sky. Uh, so just these little references across, across the piece. And then took a piece of sari ribbon um, and um, oh, so in the background, I did a running stitch both directions, and then on the sari that I couched down, uh, I used <laughs> some other stitch from Sue Sparta's book. So I'm not, I'm not great at remembering stitch names. I'm quite lousy, as a matter of fact, around remembering stitch names. Um, but she breaks her book out into kind of helpful ways of thinking about uh, how you're going to use these fancy stitches, and she's got, you know, she's got a section that's like, outline stitches or line stitches or couching stitches uh, and so it's kind of helpful to kind of think about how I can use each of these stitches uh, but as you can see it's essentially it's a knotted stitch right I've just essentially just done knots um, and I just can't remember which kind of knot it was um, then in this square let me zoom out a little bit in this square um, I did some spirals. Um, the, um, the memory that I'm capturing here is, as I mentioned in my last video, the memory of a journey that I took. And by journey, I don't mean travels, I mean uh, what some people might call a shamanic journey. Um, and I don't use the word shamanic because I'm not Siberian. Um, my ancestors are from almost entirely from the British Isles and a little bit of France and some from uh, the Scandinavian countries. Um, so, you know, uh, my ancestry is Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Nordic. Um, and in those places, the one symbol that's often referred to, that's often used to talk about 
that space between the worlds, like this world that we live in and the other worlds. Uh, some people might say another world that exists, and I might say other worlds that exist here now, but we just don't see them very easily or pay attention to them. Um, they, they, the symbol that's often used in that area of the world in more ancient cultures is the hedge. Uh, so I call it hedge walking and some people call it journeying or shamanic journeying or these are all just words to point to that ability that we have if we pay attention to, uh, to stand between the worlds or to journey between the worlds. Um, <clears throat> so this is my reference to the hedge, um, the, the circle, the spiral, uh, is obviously a symbol in many cultures, uh, you know, across the world. There's no monopoly on that in, in Celtic cultures. And the spiral is a pr pretty big symbol in, uh, in Celtic cultures, or maybe I would say Neo-Celtic cultures, because we don't know a lot about what the Celtic cultures were doing because they didn't leave us written records, right? Um, so, but anyway, this is my, uh, this spiral is a reference to that, a reference to the fact that this is a cloth about a journey, a cloth about a, a journey between worlds. Um, and um, I just did the online making Zen retreat that was last week or two weeks ago. Um, and uh, one of the presenters, Emma Freeman, I've been following her on, on um, Instagram for a while and she did this beautiful presentation about uh, uh, fiber arts as poetry, stitching as poetry. And, the, and uh, she, her project was a little poetic cloth book I forget exactly what she called it, so I'm sorry if I'm not referencing it exactly. But um, anyway, she she uh, showed you know kind of making poetic marks, which down here at the bottom you can see I've done some of those, uh, m you know my version of those poetic marks. Um, maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. Um, and. You know, I, I think that all of this kind of embroidery and hand stitching are, as she so beautifully talks about, you know, poetic marks. Um, and then, you know, I got in a variety of knots learned in the Sue Spargo book, the French knot, the colonial knot. Um, seem to be having a little trouble with my <laughs> zooming in and out. Uh, French knot, colonial knot, and Chinese knot is what she teaches. Um, and I used different threads uh, to accomplish that. This is a like a very a silk thread. It's incredibly fine, and coming out of winter, the tips of my fingers are very rough stitching. Um, and so the the this uh, silk thread really catches cap catches on the roughness uh, very. It catches on everything very very easily. Um, I don't seem to be able to zoom out here. I'm having a lot of difficulties with the camera today. Um, but anyway, uh, then this is an Aurora thread. Um, and this is just a, a, some old knitting thread. I, I'm not able to knit anymore because I've got very bad, um, not very bad, but I, I've got this arthritis in my uh, thumb area, which is, you know, I think pretty common among stitchers. Um, but I just can't knit anymore. So I'm repurposing a lot of my knitting thread um, and it makes great couching thread. Um, so then over here, uh, we've got a symbol from the journey, um, which I just stitched with a, um, I didn't get all my threads ready, uh, but it's just, you know, it's like a gold, gold thread. Um, and then again, a couching of a sari ribbon um, and another stitch. This is a pistol stitch, uh, you, um, but sewn in a kind of a, a cross stitch pistol stitch. Um, and I was really lucky to find a thread that could uh, be in conversation with the blue that is under this pink. This pink shines. I think I think you can see it. 
like as you move it, there's this like blue undertones um, to the thread, to the, to the sari, and then the thread kind of picks that up, which is nice. And then um, here's another uh, corner, um, again the burlap, and what I just did was the, uh, I just did a running stitch and then kind of wove um, through that, which you see, um, you know, which is uh, straight out of sash uh, Sashiko. Uh, and then um, I took Gimp, um, which might be like my new favorite and yet also hated <laughs> thread. It's, in, it's very hard to work with. I worked with it on the um, April page for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and I had way too many layers and so I had ne literally needed a plier to get the gimp through. But this was much easier and I just think that came out, it's so cool. It's got so much texture and dimensionality and shine. Um, this, you can find lots of variety of gimp on the Sue Spargo website. And then again, that wool from the sky and um, in the background there. I don't know why my camera's giving me so much difficulty. I can't zoom out and I don't know why that is. There we go. <laughs> I hope that didn't make you sick. Uh, then with some velvet here on the top. So we're com so I'm coming along. Um, now I'm, I've moved on to the sky now. Um, and I'm going to be doing a um, Van Gogh inspired kind of sky, swirly sky. Uh, and um, well, so we'll see where it goes. Yeah, so I thought I might do a little stitching. Just pick up here. Um, and I'm just doing a running stitch right now, basically. Um, kind of sketched out a little bit, sketch out a little design and then just fill it with the running stitch. Then I'll sketch out a little more. Um, and you can see I've got multiple colors going at the same time uh, because I'll want to be carrying the colors up as the way I carried this yellow up a little bit into the blue, I'll carry the blue up a little bit into the purple uh, and so on. Um, so yeah, so it's a, uh, quite a hot weekend here in the Northeast. Um, the last many years, we've gone sort of basically from March to July. <laughs> we've definitely, um, let me move that pin so I don't continue to stab myself. Um, we've really gone straight into summer the last many years. And um, this spring, we actually had spring. And it was, it was kind of weird. People kept talking about how chilly it was in the 50s in April and May. And that's exactly what it's supposed to be, right? Usually you hope, you're hoping that it'll get to the 50s in April. And um, I'm actually gonna put this on a hoop. You're hoping it gets into the 50s in April. Uh, and then maybe if you're lucky, the 60s in May. And it feels like spring and it's wonderful and everything is blooming and it's fantastic. Um, and we've skipped right over that for several years now. And so to have that back, everyone's quite disconcerted by it. <laughs> um, disconcerted by it, be, and, and so people are saying, oh, it's, it's so chilly, um, when it's in fact exactly what it should be. Um, so to me, it's been a lovely spring, and now to suddenly be launched quite directly into the 80s this weekend was uh, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> um, and yesterday I was at the Bands Off Our Body March. Um, and so, you know, I don't want to get too political here because I, I realize there might be people watching this who are, um, who are definitely, uh, anti-abortion. Um, and, you know, this is, this is about... Oh, again, I'm having trouble with the Zoom. This video is really about my um, stitching um, and not about politics. And, uh, you know, also, um, that is a, this is a part of who I am. 
um, that I do believe that a woman should have a choice. Um, I myself probably would never have gotten an abortion if I was in that position. Um, and the point is, that's my choice. Um, so anyway, I was at the Bands on Bodies, Bands Off Our Bodies rally yesterday here in the Northeast. Um, and it was hot. Woo, baby. It was so hot. Um, yeah, so at some point I had to, I had not prepared properly. I had no sunscreen on, um, which was just silly. Um, nevertheless, it was a great group of women out there. Lots of people honking as they passed in their cars. Um, and it felt, I, I felt, you know, good about making my voice heard on this particular topic. And, you know, if that's not where you are and if you're uh, on the other side of the issue, uh, um, you know, respect. I definitely don't want the comments section to turn into a debate about abortion. Um, I want to respect that other people feel differently. Uh, and, and I feel strongly. Um, I, also, I also am quite worried that if the Supreme Court does in fact uh, overturn Roe v. Wade based on the argument that um, uh, the 14th Amendment does not specifically say it protects abortion, um, that then many other uh, civil liberties, um, such as gay marriage um, and stuff like that, will also be overturned for the same reason. And I just, yeah, that just really worries me. You know, I, I have dear loved ones, friends, and family who, um, who are in the LGBTQIA community and who deserve the same happiness as me, and I want them to have that and for that liberty to be protected. You know, so I feel concern. <laughs> I feel concern. Um, and again, I, I recognize that maybe there's people watching this video who feel differently. Um, and so I appreciate you just sitting through this little part um, as we stitch. Anyway, I am thinking about the May, um, the May page for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, Yeah, it's, I have to say, I, I was, I have been way into this challenge for, you know, five months now, and it's possible that April just <laughs> blew me out, <laughs> that, I, that I can't, I'm having trouble getting going. And I know what I'm going to do, I think, or I mean, I, you know, I have an idea of what to do. Um, I have an idea of the bird. Um... And I just, I'm having a lot of trouble starting. I mean, part of it is I'm into this particular project now. Um, but also, I just feel like maybe April just, April was, so I, I, for April I did a crazy quilt background. And oh my God, it, it, it brought me to my knees, that thing. And um, it, was, it was tough. <laughs> it was very tough. And it kind of maybe, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I notice that I am not jumping into the May page. I have not started it in any way except to kind of think about it, um, which is fine. It's, I'm not obligated, right? But uh, I would love to continue to keep up with the community and to continue to keep up with my book. Um, anyway. We'll see what happens there. Something will happen. Or, or I don't know, maybe it won't. Maybe nothing will happen. Maybe that will be the end for me. I don't know, maybe I'll just be way into this project. And um, Anyway, uh, I've seen some gorgeous, gorgeous um, birds on the Facebook group. So that's super fun. 
really. I just like, what an amazing group of people. And this whole stitching community is just lovely. Um, like I'm almost, I'm, I'm kind of regretting that I even brought up where I was yesterday because it's so hard for us to be in community right now. The country is so divided and it's so hard for us to have conversations about things uh, where we disagree. It, um, it's, you know, we don't seem to be able to do it. We don't seem to be able to disagree and yet stay connected somehow. Um, and I feel like we really have to learn how to do that uh, if we're gonna keep this country together and keep going together, we have to learn how to be in conversation about the difficult things, right? For me to sit and listen to somebody um, who is really, really opposed to abortion and to hear his or her reasons for that um, and to understand um, where that person is coming from. And for me to be able to um, share my, my views and my opinions on that, and for us to be able to stay connected, to stay neighbors, you know? Because um, that's, that's what this stitching community feels like, right? It feels like neighborhood. Um, and it's people across the country uh, and it's people from different economic um, uh, perspectives and different, uh, not, not perspectives, different uh, economic lived experience and different religious lived experience and different um, regional and cultural lived experience. Um, and what brings us together is that we love, we love the stitching. And so, when I talk about having been at the rally yesterday, I run the risk of a whole bunch of people turning off the video. And yeah, that makes me sad. It makes me sad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. It makes me sad and, and I wish that we could find the ways to <clears throat> be together in conversation and to stay together in conversation even when we disagree. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just gonna part with those thoughts. I'm going to say, you know, if you were offended by anything I said, um, I stand by what I said and I feel strongly about it, which is why I was out yesterday. And um, I hope that we can stay connected as, you know, as community uh, through difficult times. Um, yeah, so I'm fascinated to see what's gonna happen in the, <laughs> in the comments box. Um, but just know that because I, f I might feel differently than you, but it doesn't mean I disrespect you uh, or demonize you. Um, I just feel strongly and that that's, those feelings might be different from yours. And we have this love of stitching together. So take good care of yourselves out there, have fun stitching, and um, look forward to going around uh, YouTube to see what you're working on. Bye-bye.